In today's KSAT Q&A, we are joined by San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg, as we are so often on Tuesdays. And we have, Mayor, a big topic that we want to talk about, something that got a lot of people's attention over the weekend. What was just a, a violent weekend, a series of shootings in San Antonio, one of them most notably at North Star Mall Sunday afternoon, a man shot and killed inside a barber shop there at the mall. But that's not the only one that happened. So I want to get your thoughts on this, what seems to be an increase in, in violent crime in San Antonio. Are you having any conversations about what's going on here? We sure are. And, and in fact, um, obviously, and I think the chief has made some comments about this already, uh, investigating the link between a couple of uh, those shootings which, which appear to be targeted. In fact, all of the shootings that occurred uh, appeared to be not random. And so that is underway right now. I will say, uh, you know, I just returned from a conference of mayors, and this is the topic of discussion in cities all across the country. Um, you know, one of the challenges here in Texas that's unique is the fact that we are uh, also seeing a proliferation of guns. And so, you know, in, in light of that, it, it is still uh, boggles my mind that the legislature continues to make it easier for young people and people who are unstable, dangerous to access weapons and get weapons on our street. That appears to be obviously going in the wrong direction, but we're working on both sides of this issue in the city of San Antonio we just got briefed on our hotspot initiative that has shown a marked decrease in where those interventions are taking place. A uh, hotspot, making sure that the police resources are stepped up in the areas where we see uh, crime. Uh, and, and so it's showing a decrease in crime, violent crime overall, but in particular, those hotspot areas. We're also going to be working towards uh, the uh, in, uh, increase in our police officers on the street, another 100 officers, patrol officers in this coming budget. And of course, we're working with uh, the Texas Anti-Gang Initiative as well, where we have uh, agencies at the local, state and federal level working to really uh, get to the root of uh, some of the gang activities that we've seen over the number of last several years and um, really start apprehending uh, you know, leaders of these gangs and putting an end to this across agencies, working to share information, uh, intelligence, et cetera, uh, to get a grip on this. But, you know, this is a challenge being faced all across the country. What's unique uh, here in Texas and in some other states as well is the legislature making it easier for these weapons to be all over our streets and getting in the wrong hands. I, I want to talk a little bit about have you had conversations with the police chief and the district attorney, because a lot of these, yes, they're targeted. I'm glad you added that context, but there are innocent people that are getting caught in the crossfire in some of these cases. I mean, we're very lucky with a, with a mall on a Sunday that, you know, more than one person wasn't shot in that whole thing. I mean, are you having these conversations to try to figure out from a multi-pronged attack here on what's happening? Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, it's it's dealing with the immediate issue of the crime, but it's also getting upstream from that. And so we are having those conversations. We're also making sure that we are sharing information with other law enforcement agencies and they with us to make sure that we're in the best position possible to prevent these crimes from happening in the first place and to really break the chain of retaliation that we often see in these targeted shootings. And then in the course of, uh, you know, again, what I've mentioned, the, the proliferation of weapons and weapons being stolen out of cars, et cetera, uh, working with our law enforcement agencies to provide tools for people to first, hopefully not store weapons in their cars, but in the event that there are weapons in a home or, or in, a, in a car, even making sure they're secured and cannot be stolen. Uh, so, again, we're working uh, on all sides of the issue to really um, get a hold of this issue and bring a decrease in our crime rates. And I will say again, credit to our, our law enforcement agencies, the initial efforts on the hotspot initiative where we're shifting resources based on data where those crimes occur, we're seeing a marked decrease 
in violent crime in those areas where that intervention is occurring and a decrease in violent crime overall. You know, I know that the police chief, when talking about these shootings being targeted yesterday, he did mention frustrations with some people being let out on bond and this being a recurring issue, pointing a lot towards the judicial side of things. But the police department itself, you mentioned this hotspot initiative. Do you think the department is doing what needs to be done to try to tackle this problem? I imagine that hotspot is part of that. Can you explain a little bit more what PD is doing to try to decrease violent crime? So there's a number of different things, and it's not just the police department, but as far as police officer, a police department and law enforcement resources are concerned, we want to focus those resources where they are needed the most. And frankly, where we see increases in crime, uh, we shift those resources. That's the, the genesis of this hotspot initiative which is a, a three-phased effort that we're doing in conjunction with UTSA providing some data analysis on where to ship those resources. We got our briefing uh, on the initial results of that initiative last week at the city council. Uh, so we've seen, again, marked decrease uh, in violent crime in those areas where those interventions are occurring and a decrease in crime uh, overall in the city. Uh, during that period of time, but in particular in those areas where we're shifting resources. I will say also, with respect to law enforcement resources writ large, one of the things that we're doing is studying the personnel and staffing contingents across these different departments. And we are going to be really increasing patrol resources in our police department starting this year with another 100 officers being hired into the department. And then over the course of the next three to five years, uh, another couple hundred or more and I just re, uh, was also uh, corresponding with um, some of our congressional representatives, Congre Congressman Gonzalez, uh, advocating on our behalf for some Department of Justice grants so that we can continue to provide the resources necessary uh, to keep crime under control and to uh, return the trend on what has been a, a national rise in violent crime across the country. Mayor, we've run out of time. Obviously, a, a lot of topics to get to you to talk about with you, but violent crime is certainly one that affects everybody and everyone has an interest in finding out what the city's doing about that. So thanks so much for sharing your thoughts with us and we'll be seeing you next week, hopefully. Thanks so much, y'all. Have a good night. Thanks, Mayor. Keep up to date with all of San Antonio's top news, weather, and so much more by clicking the like and subscribe buttons below. And once again, thanks for watching KSAT.